everybody. Welcome to Orange United Methodist. We are excited that you are here and willing to worship our loving Savior this morning. Let's go ahead and stand and declare that God is with us as we sing. I am home for this.
and grab something. Uh, we have a special gift for you to just say thanks for being with us this morning as we worship God. Uh, we do have a few announcements this morning, but as we uh, go through those, I'll invite the ushers to come forward and pass out our attendance pads. If you could, just let us know that you're here. We'd love to be able to check in and uh, see if there's anything you need. Uh, if you have a prayer request you'd like us to add, if you have uh, are in need of a visit, we'd love to touch base with you there. But please just let us know if you're here. We do go through those. Uh, bye, Ephraim. <laughs> Uh, but we do go through those each week and make sure that we're keeping track of who's here. Uh, so please let us know. Also, we do have a few things that are coming up in the immediate uh, future. This evening, our children's ministry will be performing It's Cool in the Furnace. And that's tonight at 6 p.m. right here in the Fellowship Hall. So you are invited to come out and hear some great music and see what they've been up to during our discipleship hour each week since Christmas time. Uh, and it'll give you a good foretaste if you have young children. If you're interested in being a part of the zone, we'd love for you to check us check that out tonight. Um, also, before that, uh, at 4:30, we invite you to join us for Disciple Bible Study in the conference room. We meet from 4:30 to 6. Child care is provided, and we are starting our official week one tonight with uh, a study on the prophets. So you are invited to that as well. We have a number of prayer concerns, care calendars that are ongoing in your bulletin. We'd love for you to uh, look at those, continue to lift up those folks. Um, Samantha Cave's dad, uh, Jake, is um, recovering. Uh, Carolyn Felton, Lydia Twomley, Ed Struble, Paul Mann, Bill Christian, Lacey Gerard, Ben Keebler. Please continue to lift those folks up each uh, day in your prayer time and let us know if there's anyone who should be added to that list. We'd love to continue to lift them up. We also have a really exciting announcement uh, this morning that our uh, officially, officially, Josh Abraham is joining us as our worship leader. Uh, being able to share in his ministry and so uh, Josh is coming to us fresh from Divinity School so uh, he graduated last Saturday which is very exciting with the end there so we're really fortunate to have him and now we get to mold him he's fresh so <laughs> but we're really excited he, uh, he wanted to, you all to know his favorite food is french fries um, and also, he, uh, he's coming uh, with his wife, Laura. Laura, would you stand up? Sorry. It's for you to know, Laura's favorite food is chocolate, any kind. Uh, and so we just want to welcome you, and we're excited that you're going to be a part of this Orange family. And uh, ask Josh if you wanted to share just a few words briefly. I'm really excited to be with y'all. I love worship ministry. I love getting to engage with people and to show how amazing and how lovely God's love for all of us is through song, through art, through whatever medium that he has given us. Uh, the verse that I use to impact me, to impact other people is uh, from Psalm 9, verses 9, uh, yeah, verses 9. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. And those who know your name put their trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord, who sits enthroned in Zion. Tell the people of his deeds. That is what I want to share with you guys while I'm here at Orange. That is what I hope that you can share with the people that you interact with with your daily lives. So I look forward to meeting you guys. Please come up to me and my wife. Introduce yourselves. We'd love to get to know you guys. and Take you out to lunch or something like that. Please don't hesitate. Thank you guys. I'm excited to be here. And indeed, you are welcome this morning to the neighborhood. We continue our Mr. Rogers sermon series. Uh, this morning, Pastor David's going to share uh, a message with us, so we are really looking forward to that. At this time, I'll invite everyone to stand and greet one another in the name of Jesus. <laughs>
the ministry moment with um, the Orange United Methodist softball team. In case you didn't know, we have a softball team. We do. And uh, Dave Backus is here to tell us a little bit more. Well, the league is actually just a, a large Christian community, so we play across the street at uh, Homestead Park. It's made up of seven to ten local churches. Uh, there's a gentleman from uh, Holy Family Church that heads it up. His name is Michael Cornett. He does a really great job with it. Um, so uh, we start every game. We huddle up around home plate. We have a prayer for everybody's safety and remind folks what they're out there for. So it's really about friends and fellowship. Uh, and just being with other Christian Christian folks. Okay, and how would someone get involved? What are the details? Well, that's the hard part. So I hold like four tryouts a year. <laughs> There's actually only two qualifications. Okay, if you're 13 and you promise that you're coming out there on Sunday for two hours to have fun, that's the two qualifications that there is. What times? What times? Um, so on Sundays, the game times are 2 o'clock and 4.30, and like I said, it's across the street. You don't have to tell anybody you're coming, all you have to do is show up, and then we write you down on the lineup as you show up. There are several in here uh, that have played for several years. Uh, again, I said it was 13, men, women, or children. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, we struggle with women, and we struggle getting kids out there. So uh, the more the merrier, uh, and, and it's a lot of fun now. The average temperature is usually 95 and scorching, I will tell you that, so it's only during the summer. Uh, we usually try to finish up right around Labor Day. Okay, so can everyone who's part of the Orange softball team stand up, please? Or has ever been part of it? Or has ever been part of it? They want to stand up. I know, that's why I was trying to Okay, And you can see, meet Dave in the back if you have any questions. Continue in worship. You can go ahead and stand if you're able. Would you bow your heads and pray with me? God, you are the cornerstone of our faith. You are the author and the finisher of everything that we've started. All our hope is built on you and the power of your son's resurrection. You have given us life everlasting because of what Jesus has done. So that is the power that we sing in this morning. It's in your holy son's name, amen.
take us. Our God will guide us. So in that spirit, let us continue our worship by turning our attention to the screen. You may have a seat. single verse. I leave the gift of peace with you, my peace, not the kind of fragile peace given by the world, but my perfect peace. Don't yield to fear or be troubled in your hearts. Instead, be courageous. And the second reading comes from the Old Testament. It's a blessing, and I'll probably, if, I, if I'm smart enough, I will say this blessing again at the end of the service comes from the book of Numbers. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Well, today, is, as I begin, I want to begin with prayer. So let's pray. Oh God, may your Holy Spirit be present and continue to be present and be at work in this place, welcomed in this place. We welcome you in our song. We welcome you in our listening and our meditating together. We welcome you into this moment of preaching and sharing. And we ask for your Holy Spirit, God, to enable me to say the, the right words and for us to hear the right words. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Today, as I, I say fare, farewell, or Maybe better, I should say, as we say farewell to one another, it's uh, challenging to find, find the, the right words. And uh, fortunately, uh, Mr. Rogers, we have to be in this Mr. Rogers series, so uh, he had a lot to say about how you, you teach children to say goodbye and about change and about leaving. And so I found something. I, I, I can't find which exact... Um, uh, where, where where this came from, but it's clearly words from Mr. Rogers, and I want to share this. If you could only sense how important you are to the lives of those you meet, how important you can be to the people you may never even dream of. There is something of yourself that you leave at every meeting with another person, and it's that last, it's all great, but it's the last sentence. Um, but can you put it back for me? Thank you. It's a disappearing slides. That's a, there is something of yourself that you leave at every meeting with another person. 
Well, it's all good, but today I want to say, um, there's some, one of the things I want to say today is that um, I'm glad we met. Amen. I'm glad that we met. I'm glad to have met you. I thank God for the opportunity for us to have met. Um, oh, that, that's the first time that's ever happened. <laughs> it's God. That's good. <laughs> And I wanted to say, I like you. It's like Mr. Rogers. I like you. I, you are loved. And you are capable of loving. And I like you. Um, you've inspired me. I've learned from you. You are important to me. And you always will be. So I'm glad that we met. Mr. Rogers said that any time we meet somebody... We leave something of ourselves with that person. We leave something with every person we meet. You believe that? And what we leave makes a difference, so we all try real hard to leave behind something good, right? Amen. And as I go, you leave me with much goodness. And I hope that I leave you with something good as well. Um, I remember... On one of my, my first job I had, it was a sales job, and I was working myself crazy, and, was, and I was not having very much success. Well, let me correct that. I wasn't having any success. <laughs> it was just terrible. And every day after day, I was driving all over town, stopping at every little business and trying to get them to listen to me. And on one particular day, I was about as far out of my, in my territory as I could be, a good hour or so it would take me to get back to the office. And at the end of a long and disappointing day, I finally had a, a, what appeared to be potential success. The, the, person, the business owner would talk to me. <laughs> so that was good. He talked to me. We listened to, we listened to him. He talk about the product and all that. And, it went on, he asked questions. I was really feeling pretty pumped up about the whole thing. And uh, then we got we talked a little bit about family and his family and stuff. And, and by the time I, when I liked that, I was like, yes, you know, yes. I didn't get the, I hadn't signed any papers yet, but I just expected that he, he was going to think it over, like you said, call me and, and we'd get this, I'd have my, I'd have a, I'd have a sale. And so I got back to the office after all this terrible traffic, awful traffic, and sat down at my desk and uh, this receptionist said, there's a call for you, and, and it's, the, it's the guy from the business you stopped at this afternoon. I said, I said, well, put him through. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he put him through, and, and I said, well, how can I help you, sir? Are you ready? And you ready to, to uh, you know, ready to finish up this deal? And he said, "No, actually, you left your briefcase. <laughs> you, you, you left your briefcase here. <laughs> that's the truth. You know you can't. That's true. You can't make that up." <laughs> so anyway, and I hope, I hope as I, as I leave Orange United Methodist Church, I leave behind more than my briefcase. <laughs> you know. I hope I'll leave you with something really good, and I know that as I, as I go, you leave me with a lot of really wonderful things that I'll hold on to. And I thought I'd share a few of those today. I leave with your welcoming spirit. I leave with your welcoming spirit. You, you know, lots of churches say they're welcoming, and they aren't. Um, or I, we went to, I went to one church while I was out of town a couple months ago. As we met at this church and I walked in for Sunday worship and nobody spoke to me. It, the whole time I was there, I finally, on my way out, went over and introduced myself to the pastor. Now, that was, that was kind of sad, right? You don't, we don't have that experience at Orange. You can't get in here without somebody greeting you, smiling at you, welcoming you, hugging you, 
shaking your hand, asking who you are, making you wear a goofy name tag. You, you, you cannot get in here without somebody like signaling to you, right, that we're glad you're here. Right? Not every church is like that. So I felt welcomed. Uh, you welcomed me. You welcomed our family. And I have watched you welcome many more in the time that I've been here. And I want you to know that's something special that you do really well, right? And I hope as I go forward that I can be more welcoming as a person and more welcoming in, in my ministry. All right? I have learned and I leave with your passion for food ministries. <laughs> I do. Honestly, I... I I like, I love to cook and I love to eat, and now I love to have my son cook and me eat. <laughs> it's, it's working out beautifully. And when Marcy's home, she cleans up the kitchen. So, it's, you know, I, I'm practically retired. So, um, but I, I love to cook. But as I've been, as we've been here together, I've watched, um, I've watched you set up a care calendar so that meals could be delivered to a family going through a tough time. Many meals, right? And I've watched, uh, um, I've watched you raise food to give to backpack buddies. I've, I've watched you prepare for the, your meal for the IFC shelter. And it smelled good and it took everything I could do not to steal one of those chicken legs. <laughs> I've watched you, it, you know, Minister and through all the ways we feed here through fellowship meals and things like yesterday's fish fry uh, Everything you raise from that is in order to feed someone else who needs a meal. So I leave with you know, an appreciation for uh, the ministry of feeding people Right, I've been I'm good at feeding myself, but I'd like to improve it at, at, at being better at feeding others and and using that as a, as a ministry. Um, one person who shall remain nameless said that she prepares every meal and serves every meal as if it was being served to Jesus. Right? That's one of our own, and I won't say her name. <laughs> <laughs> what can she do to me? I'm on the way out. <laughs> Well, that's kind of the wrong question. She can probably still find someone. We got about four days, but Helen has ins inspired many of us and inspired me and um, and the food ministry. Take that with me. I believe with uh, I believe with a greater r realization of what it means to serve. Anybody can hang up a plaque that says, "As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord." I've got that plaque. You can you can get it on Amazon, right? But it's but what I what I have seen and, and hear and witnessed is is a service that's more of a roll up your sleeves, get to work, work till the job is done, give it blood, sweat, and tears, all in the name of Jesus, right? I've watched in, in so many different whether it was a work day here or whether it was building a ramp. Well, there could be any number of things. I've watched that kind of service. Setting up chairs, breaking down chairs, cooking in the kitchen long hours to get ready for an event. When we moved here um, three years ago, I, I single-handedly organized the world's worst move. <laughs> I kid you not. I, had to, I, I tried to go out on the cheap. I got a truck that was too small. I got two guys that were not smart enough <laughs> and I really needed eight guys and I needed a bigger truck and everything that could go wrong really went wrong we couldn't get we were behind schedule we could get ha I couldn't even get half of our stuff in the truck but we took what we could and we were way behind schedule we got here we pulled up to the parsonage after way after dark and there were there was a team of guys there waiting to unload and without and you know, in the blink of an eye they were busy unloading and somehow spiritually empowered putting things in the right place more or less right <laughs> and then we still had more stuff left and Steve and Jim knew 
I still had more stuff. And they got in the truck with me, and the three of us drove back to, to Raleigh and unloaded as much of the stuff as we could and came back. And it must have been two or three in the morning. And there were still guys there. The guys, some guys came back out to show up to help us unpack. And the next day, Steve and I went back and got the <laughs> remainders. I, I, I can't believe he still loves me after all that. It's like... But uh, that's, to me, that I learned a lot about service from being with, with you. And I'll take, take that with me. Amy's love language is acts of service. So, I'm so, you know, so I've got all kinds of opportunities to put my newfound you know, gift for serving to use. I'll leave with um, your nurturing heart. Um, when I was diagnosed with cancer back in around September 2017. Uh, you all sur sur you surrounded me. You surrounded my family. Uh, I can't tell you how I, I, you were praying for me privately. You were praying for me as a group. You were praying for us and, and worship. I had a mountain of cards of, with words of encouragement and words of scripture coming in on a steady basis. I had offers to help me I had the, 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 world's most, the world's longest food train. Uh, came, we, we, we were the recipients of that. And I, we had meals uh, throughout the week for months. And I'll never forget, I, I remember the meals, the particular meals. Like Barry's crock pot bit brisket. That was unbelievable. Who brings that to a food train? I'm like, choo choo. <laughs> that was good. And maybe one of the, another one I'll never forget is when Sarah Black brought by my own, our own personal Mexican fiesta. I mean, she had arms full of, of bags of things and everything but the sombrero. And when that went on, it did, you, you, you surround surrounded us and we drew strength from that um, you know we were able to you helped carry the, a, a heavy load you helped lighten our, our load and um, maybe more than anything you helped me to, to embrace um, with faith the, the, the confidence that God would be glorified through my experience of cancer that Jesus Christ would be glorified. Y'all gave me, the, I found the faith here. I found the sufficient strength and faith to live into this disease in a way that I hope was, could be faithful and inspiring to others. You know? And so I'll always be grateful for the way um, that in this place, um, we were able to uh, draw the strength to, to, to move forward in that kind of way. I hope, I've watched you nurture so many others in the time I've been here, from infants to the elderly. And you have done such a great job loving one another and loving those who belong to you and even those who don't belong to you. And we'll take that nurturing uh, with you. I leave with greater faith in Jesus Christ. You, as I mentioned, you have strengthened my faith. I remember watching uh, Jean, uh, she, I came into the intercessory prayer team early on and they were praying as they do every week and as I sat and prayed with them, they prayed for revival for this church. And they had been praying for revival and they have continued to pray for revival and I've sat and prayed with Jean Barr and the rest of these wonderful ladies and they prayed for revival and I know that you know they pray for you all year long and you receive cards and, and notes and uh, they prayed for revival and, and I have watched this church experience revival our, would you not say our, our worship has been revived today experiencing revival we're a healthier congregation, a happier congregation, a more holy congregation. And so I've watched 
revival happening, but there's been a revival in me as well, in my own faith, and my own intimacy, my own relationship with God has grown. I never forget that bad state to me. It's, it's like, like God is just, I can't even, like God is just supercharged your ministry. You know? <laughs> And I, it was so encouraging to me that, to think, okay, this we go through hard times, we go through disease, we go through other setbacks and, and disappointments and trials. And but God is a faithful God who strengthens us, is present with us, who carries us, and who can supercharge us. And so I, I leave with an increase in faith. Well, what do I hope that I could leave behind with you? Well, I hope that you will remember my puns. <laughs> Aren't you glad you came? <laughs> you know, I, I do. I hope you'll remember my good looks. <laughs> yes. I hope you'll remember just that I was the smartest person you ever met. <laughs> And also, never forget my humility. <laughs> Actually, though, there's only one thing that I really hope that I will, could leave you with, and that is with a greater faith in Jesus Christ. That is my, my one desire, that you would leave with a greater faith in Jesus Christ, that you would always put Jesus Christ first, that he would be number one in your life, always there's no one like him there is no one who can do what he can do he is the way he is the truth he is the life amen, amen. he's our salvation he's our forgiver he's our peace he's the one who washes us clean he's our liberator he's our life giver he's the spirit giver He's the one at work in us, making us brand new each day. He's everything. He's our friend. He's our companion. He's the source of eternal and everlasting life. I want you to have faith in Jesus Christ. I want to leave behind faith in Jesus Christ. It will thrill me if you've come to faith in Jesus while I was with you. It will thrill me if your faith has grown while I've been with you. But you don't even have to tell me. Just tell somebody else who needs to know Jesus. Jesus made friends from the beginning. He knew about meeting people, right? He's met many of the people in this room. He's friends with many of us. And if he's not your friend, he wants to be. He'd like to be your friend. He likes you. When he meets people, he leaves something behind. Always, right? Always leaves something behind. There's always a blessing. We think back, what does Jesus leave behind? What he left behind his word, his teaching, his example. Jesus left behind his left his church upon you all build my church people he leaves behind the, a legacy of untold billions of lives changed forever for good he leaves behind we're promised his peace and I want to share these words with you from John 14 again from the from the beginning. Actually, we, if you guys can flip back to it, we'll put it back on the screen and you can, if it's not, is that too hard? No, nothing's too hard for, for you. <laughs> I'll leave the gift of peace with you, my peace. Not the kind of fragile peace given by the world, but my perfect peace. Don't yield to fear or be troubled in your hearts. Instead, be courageous. Right. Jesus wants you not to have peace. Jesus wants you to have peace, but not the peace the world gives, but real peace. What is real peace? Real peace is for you to have an intimate, personal relationship with God through your faith in Jesus Christ's death and resurrection for you. 
That's, that's real peace. A relationship with God. And with that real peace, part of it's a, a real relationship with the people in your lives. That you're able to love one another in ways that are, that we are able to love one another in ways that are holy and Christ-like. And that we are able to love ourselves. Right? Amen? Amen. We love ourselves because God loves us. And so we can love and be good to ourselves. That's peace. That's real peace. And you can't find it on Amazon. You can't buy it anywhere. You can only accept it freely from the hands of Jesus Christ. And I hope you will. If you haven't already given your life to Jesus Christ, I want to in my time today giving you that opportunity um, he's ready he's present here in this place and ready to meet you here like I said if he's not your friend already he desperately wants to be your friend and all you have to do is be his friend and say yes right. and so we're, I'm going to pray a special prayer with you and I just want you to go close your eyes and you can repeat after me. Um, Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. You repeat that. Let's try it again. I'll say it and you repeat it. I know it's hard. You can do it. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. And I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, if you've prayed that prayer, Billy Graham would say you've been, you've been born again. If you've prayed that prayer, you have, I believe you have been born again. If you prayed that prayer earnestly. And now the next step, live in grace. Right? Be here. Be in worship. Be present. Be active in the life of the church. Learn in community. Learn what it is to be a Christian. And love through service. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, all God's people said, Amen. As we continue to worship, we'll bring our offerings to God our tithes and our offerings. Thank you for your continued faithfulness. Our ushers will bring the baskets by here in just a moment. As you have a chance to give, I invite you to stand and join in, our, and join in song as we continue to worship.
You may be seated. I invite Brad and Pastor David Ford. Pastor David and his family off with a blessing, um, but also uh, with just some words of appreciation and love, and um, you are, have been such a wonderful, uh, not just boss, <laughs> but friend and partner in ministry, and I just want to thank you so much for the opportunities and the love and the leadership and the shepherding that you've given to our entire team, and you do leave much with us. Um, and you shared with us a scripture on April 28th, uh, and so uh, ask a friend to make this, who's pretty incredible um, calligraphy person, and she, after telling her a little bit about you, she put it on a tray, because you are a servant. Um, and it is Romans 8:28, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose and you do leave those words with us and we want to leave them with you um, and we invite folks if you'd like to sign the back during the fellowship hour that we would love to just pour our love and appreciation over you and fellowship Paul you are all invited to be uh, in that space with David and his family and to um, share all the, the ways that your meeting has meant. Uh, we want to send you with a prayer and a blessing. So we will, um, I'll open with a prayer and Brad will close with a blessing. Um, but hear these words now. God of our life's journeys, we gather here to celebrate the goodness of Pastor David and ask your blessing as he continues on this journey of discipleship. May the love that is in our hearts be a bond that unites us forever, wherever we may be. May the power of your presence bless this moment. We pause for a moment remembering the gifts that Pastor David has shared with us over the years. We know that God goes with you. As you journey onward, may you remember always that our love and appreciation for you are etched on our hearts. As you meet the poor, the pain, the stranger on your way, may you see in each one the face of our Christ. As you walk through the good times and the hard times, may you never lose sight of the shelter of God's loving arms. We praise you and thank you, God, of the journey for Pastor David and his family. We entrust them into your loving care, knowing that you are always the faithful traveler and companion on our way. Shelter them. Protect them from all harm. May the future be a source of many enriching and transforming moments. Amen. I invite you to stand and Lift your hands toward David and his family. <coughs> Please join me in this blessing. May the blessing of light be on you, light without and light within. May the blessed sunlight shine on you like a great peat fire, so that stranger and friend may come and warm themselves at it. May light shine out of the two eyes of you, like a candle set in the window of a house, bidding the wanderer come in out of the storm. May the blessing of the rain be on you. May it beat upon your spirit and wash it fair and clean, and leave there a shining pool where the blue of heaven shines, and sometimes a star. May the blessing of the earth be on you, soft under your feet as you pass along the roads, soft under you as you lie out on it, tired at the end of the day. And may it rest easy over you when at last you lie out under it. May it rest so lightly over you that your soul may be out from under it quickly, up and off and on its way to God. And now may the Lord bless you and bless you kindly. Amen. David, we love you and your family so much. And we thank you 
for all that you have left us. You pointed us to Jesus with your words and with your life, and we're so thankful for that. Just like David had said in his sermon, if you have <laughs> declared that Christ is your king, this is the song that we're going to declare. God is our king. We don't have a king named Caesar. We have one named Jesus Christ. So as we continue to worship, let's remember that these are the words that David has spoken over us.
Amen, church. Receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.